y'all today I'm going to show you how I do my little twist on dirty pour so a normal dirty pour you would put your different colors of acrylic paint into one big cup and then you're gonna dump that cup on the bottom and just let it all flow down what I do is I take kind of what you would do to a canvas how you would dirty pour on that and I apply that to my cup so what you're gonna need is your you can use regular acrylic paint if you use a regular acrylic paint, you're going to need some type of pouring medium. What this does is it keeps it from cracking. Um, and what you also want is a cup of water so that you're gonna water it down a little bit. This gives it a little more movement. Um, they also at Hobby Lobby, I don't know about Michaels, they have pre-mixed pour paint. Um, basically what they've already done is taken your acrylic and your pouring medium and put it together already um, so it's the right consistency um, and I don't add water to this it's good the way it is um, and then I have little little baby cups and some um, popsicle sticks so I can mix all that together when you're done well sorry back up for a second I'm also using coconut milk it's a hair serum you can find this at Walmart Target um, CVS anywhere what this is going to do is it's going to create like cells um, and when you use this when you use an oil um, I've also used cell magic um, the the color poor people they make cell magic which kind of does the same thing theirs is a silicone based oil what I've noticed though is when I use that um, and I'm leaving my cup upside down to finish drying all that silicone all that oil ends up dripping off like there's a lot lot of oil in it um, but even this or those um, either one you decide to use I always recommend counterculture they have stick tight what's this gonna do is it's gonna wash your cup it's gonna get rid of all that oil um, and then to make sure that you have it good and oil free before you put your epoxy on um, because if you put your epoxy on and there's oil it's going to you know pull away from the oil spots and it's just a pain to work with um, so what I do is I use two coats of the quick coat and what that's gonna do it's kind of like a urethane um, it is a urethane sealer it's going to coat it so that your epoxy doesn't do that so oh also um, I also use parchment paper this is the Costco size roll because I use a lot of it um, these are not clean um, designs very messy uh, usually I were use the silicone mats but when it comes to acrylic paint it's not very easy to clean off those so this way I just take everything ball it up throw it away um, because you're gonna have a lot of paint left over um, I also use this so it's parchment paper but I've torn a hole out of the center and the reason I do that is and I'll show you is I have one of these it's just a two by four that I've drilled a hole into and I have a female connector into it because all of my PVC have uh, the male connector at the bottom so then I can screw it in not gonna go anywhere so the point of the parchment paper would be to put over my block just to help keep everything clean as you can see from the green um, that's where it's dripped before so then when I put it up there um, this was actually a cup that I cleaned off didn't clean it well enough and I had to respray that but um so my cup I'm using a true 22 uh, for this one and I don't sand my cups I know everybody swears by it um, I do recommend always doing the ice test because even if you can't hear something rattling even if um, you don't see any damage to your cup you never know what happened in in shipping whether it's shipping to steel magnolia um, or shipping to you UPS post office whoever I mean just a bang in the right direction can pop a seal um, and you don't always hear it you don't always know about it so please before you do all this hard work ice test your cups um, and then also I'm a horrible example of it but always make sure to um, use a well ventilated area lift your windows if you're doing it inside get a fan to pull um, 
get your ventilation, especially when you're using epoxy, um, a respiratory mask, uh, always gloves, always gloves with epoxy. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so be careful and let's get started. Okay, so what you see here is all my cups, all my popsicle sticks, and for this one, I'm just using um, a regular acrylic paint. I'm not using any of the pre-mixed. So I'm gonna go ahead um, and I'm going to pour just a little bit into each of these. Um, I'm actually probably gonna use more of the gray and the red, so I'm gonna pour a little extra in those ones. And then I'm not gonna put any water in until I mix these. I wanna see how they come out, um, see how liquidy they are. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna use quite a bit, actually I'm gonna use a little more, of the gray and the red. Which is not working, it's all clogged up. I see some clumps in there. Not good. We'll work them out. We'll find them. It's an older paint, but I didn't have any others. This is actually going to be one for my husband. So he was very particular on his school colors. So black, remember, dark colors are going to dominate. They're going to wash out. So you don't want too much of those. Um, I did make a lot, but once I mix it all together in the big cup, then I'll be able to adjust how much, but I'd rather have too much than too little to start out with. So like I said, very, very wasteful. Um, see, that's really thick. It's not wanting to really pour. So this is why we add just a little, little bit of water at a time. I would say that was probably like a cap full of a water bottle. And now it's much, much, much thinner. And I actually might add some more pouring medium as well. That helps water it down, but I just wanna just make sure it's not going to crack that creates a different look. I apologize for my kids yelling in the background. I sent them to a friend's house and it looks like they decided to come home early. And do a little more, I don't think I had enough in there. Go ahead and just pour a little on more in all of them. just a little bit of water. I don't want as much in the black because I don't want it to move as much. When I, I want to be a very controlled black. So I want to keep it a little bit thicker. Yeah, see that's pretty thick. Just how I want it. Now doing black and white along with gray, these might mix and give me a lot of different grays. White's actually the hardest to mix because you can't see the difference. Like the, the other colors, you can see where the pouring medium and everything is, so you know it's good and mixed, but the white's a little bit harder. Okay, and then finally the red, which we saw the red, it had some clumps in there, so I wanna try to fish those out if I can find them. And actually, I'd like to get some more red. This doesn't seem like very much. So see, like that's a clump.
think I only saw two big ones, but I'm going to go through and double check. So this is why it's always better to use the squirt because it won't go down. But let's see if I can squirt more. Now you see why I love parchment paper. All right, this stuff is much waterier, so this is gonna flow um, a lot better than the other colors, which is fine by me. I do, however, want to add the oil into one of my colors. Um, I'm really thinking I might do it in the white. So that was five pumps. And you stir it in and you will see it changes the consistency, obviously, because it's an oil. If you don't see a change in it, like it kind of almost pulling away, add some more. So now what I'm going to do, I have my big cup and I'm going to start mixing my colors. So, and the way this is done, you don't want all of your colors all at once because it does kind of clump when you're pouring. And this one, I'm actually, I'm gonna spoon it because I don't want too much. Um. Okay. And I do have extra leftover, but I'm gonna save that just in case. And now comes the messy part. Okay, so a normal dirty pour, you would have taken this, you would have dumped it over the bottom of your cup and you would have let it just run down. Well, everything runs in the same direction. What I'm gonna do is more of, it's kind of like a combination of dirty pour and a hydro dip. So, I'm pouring, and you can see the cells, right, from the white. And if it's too watery or too runny, it's going to mix a lot more than this. And then I see, so like this was kind of more of a runny spot. So you see there's more mixing. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I just like to sometimes keep bigger chunks of color. And you can see it's all dripping off. I got to turn it all which ways. Because the whole point was not to have single direction dripping like a normal dirty pour has. What I'm doing right now is there's a blank spot right here on the bottom and I'm working the paint to get it to cover it. My husband's out there talking football with the neighbors. 
shake it, get it to form. So see like that, I have a more solid color band. And the joys of having more paint, I can just add more in. Um, I am gonna do the bottom. So this side's way more mixed. This side's a little more solid. The more you move it, the more you tilt it, the more it'll mix. I shake mine a little bit, try to get it off a little faster. It gives it a, a little bit of a swirl. I keep hitting my uh, paint over here. I always do small cups. I've never done a one quite this large. So I'm just gonna continue to move it around until it kind of stops dripping huge amounts. Like I can see all of this just shifting. So I wanna get some of those big clumps off before I put it on the drying rack. reason I poured that was I'm just trying to give it more it's like mixed solid very mixed <laughs> so I'm just trying to give it so I just said I was trying to get all the excess off and I just add more on Okay, so it's kind of where I want it. I feel like there's, well, there's still some movement. A little more than I'm wanting. And now I'm going to stick it on to my block, but don't forget to put your um, parchment paper down on top first. So I have my cup on the stand and I have my parchment paper underneath. You can probably see it's still moving a little bit and it's gonna continue to drip a little bit off. But by doing it this way and not just dumping it straight on top, I do have some more swirl, some more movement. You can see right here, it's not just a straight down drip. Um, so I'm excited to see how this one turns out. If you wanna hit it with the heat gun, pull out some of those oils. Um, 
So I'm going to hit it with my heat gun, as you see here, and then I'm going to let it finish drying probably overnight so that it's good and dry and ready for my stick tight. Okay, so these two cups here have been drying for over a day now. This one did not use any um, of the uh, Cell Magic or um, coconut milk, so this one is just acrylic paint. I'm not going to use the stick tight on it. Remember, stick tight is a, um, it washes away the oils and all that. So I'm not going to use it on this one, but I will use the quick coat, which is like a, um, it's a, just a good coat to put down before you use your epoxy. This one, on the other hand, I don't know if you can tell, it's so shiny. It's so oily. This was with the Cell Magic. Um, I don't know if you can tell. It's literally like dripping oil it's I might have to wipe it with a rag to be honest before I even start because there's so much oil which coconut milk does not have this much oil I don't know if you can see the oil on my paper towel but there's so much oil okay so to use the six stick tight I always use a cup um, that way I'm not being wasteful and I'm going to pour some in there and I'm going to get this is my little dish that I use um, for like my water slides and stuff this is a um, what are they called like the wax paintbrush that you use for like chalk paint and stuff so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this on and you don't have to have it on the turner but I'm just going to brush this stuff on And you don't want to let it dry. You want to keep it very wet. It is like a soap. And I do this for several minutes. And you'll see eventually it'll get like frothy like soap. You can see this one had good... A good mixture in the design like it's swirled it's up and down I really like the way this one I do not like and it's from that um, cell magic the the blue and the white is great um, the pink is what had the cell magic in it and it's almost like it reminds me of like amphibian skin like it's you, there's texture to it this side has more um, of the teal and white. And there was actually gray in here too, I think. Um, and I'm gonna run over here and grab real quick my water. So I had water in my cup from when I made those last ones. I'm gonna put some water on it. This is gonna help keep it wet, rinse it off. Because this one has so much oil on it, I want to make sure I get it good in the rim, the edges. I'll finish pouring it. You can see all my water down there. It's dripping the wrong way. So now what I'm going to start doing is rinsing. Okay. 
Okay, I think it's good and rinsed. Um, what I'm gonna do now, if I can find one, I usually find a microfiber rag. This is like a cheesecloth. And dry it off. I'm also gonna hit it with the heat gun to help continue to dry it. out the way okay so I'm gonna heat it with the heat gun just to try to um, get it to dry it's a another waxy paintbrush and another cup and so now I'm going to pour the quick coat and leave your heat gun handy Whoop. flew off there um, leave your heat gun handy because I use it to fast dry. So I'm going to actually start on this one, give that one a little more time to dry. And next I'm going to start up my heat gun and hit it with that. I know you probably can't see it in the video, but you will be able to see when it starts to dry. Um, one, it gets hard. Um, like that's dry already, right? Um, you'll see the, the finish looks different. Um, I'm gonna let that one, I know it's dry to the touch. Give it a second. We'll go ahead and go start this one. And now I'm gonna do a second coat on this first one. Now, you don't have to add heat. It just speeds up the drying process. Um, you're totally fine to just let it sit there. Okay. So I'm gonna let these sit here for just a couple hours, um, let them get good and dry, and then I'll be able to add my epoxy to them. Okay, so now it is time to um, put my epoxy on. This one already has the epoxy on it. So now it's my turn to epoxy this. I did let it dry overnight, you don't have to. With the quick coat, um, it could just take, I mean, honestly, after just a few minutes, um, it's usually pretty dry, but I didn't have time to get to them last night, so they dried overnight. I'm gonna let that dry for about six hours and then these should be good to go to put on my decals.